Hi, it's Lipstick Gal. Thank you so much for watching today. I have been really trying to push myself outside of my eyeshadow comfort zone, and I thought I would do that again today. I hope, if nothing else, it's at least entertaining to watch me be uncomfortable and struggle. But I wanted to use colors I don't normally use. Also, pink tones, because I shy away from pinks. It'll be probably the last color on the color wheel I would choose to put on my eyes. Mauves, yes. Um, peaches, yes. But straight up pinks, mm, I'm uncomfortable. So that's what I'm gonna be doing today. Thank you for watching. If you have not subscribed, would you please? And I thought I would do my eyes first today. So I already have on my Milani eyeshadow primer. Uh, I really have been enjoying that. So that was a recommendation from Emily Noel. I've been hearing her talk about it for years and the truth was I was still trying to work my way through a MAC paint pot and it got to the point where it's just, you couldn't save it anymore. It was dried out and needed to go and I was like, you know what, I'm not going to spend the $15, $18 in a paint pot when I can get this at the drugstore. So it's been working really well for me. And to push myself out of my comfort zone today, I'm using the Juvia's Place The Deuce and uh, this is what we look like. So I'm going to be spending a lot of time right in this area here. I'm probably also going to incorporate this really beautiful, and it's probably the only color in my comfort zone in this palette. Well, maybe this one, this one, and this one are the ones that I use the most. I have used the blues and the greens in here, but I realized I hadn't used either one of these shimmers in a significant way, and I hadn't dipped into either one of these. I had swatched them but I hadn't used them. I'm gonna start with the most neutral shade in here. This one's called, oddly enough, Berry Moose. I love how large the pans are in here. It almost feels like I might be able to, if I want to, pull off one of these shadows as a blush, but I'm gonna start with this. And you know, I'm trying something else outside of my comfort zone, not setting my eyeshadow primer. Let's see if I can get this to stick down nicely but then still blend but stay sticky where I need it when I need it. The next shade is a very pinky pink shade. This is called Creme. Worried if I go in too pigmented it's going to be difficult for me to blend. You know I had fallen out of the habit of using uh, Juvia's Place shadows. There's a couple of palettes that I have. I like their Coral palette and I like their uh, their very first palette which was a neutrals palette. And um, I had used those probably the most. And then I have the Saharan 2, and I have this one, and I realized I haven't been using those. So I thought, you know, let's bust back into some shades that are kind of worrisome. I'm going back into that first kind of neutrally light brown shade just to blend the edges here. The next shade I'm gonna work with is this orchidy color here. It's called Custard. So I'm gonna tap off the excess. This is really pretty. It kind of, you know, leans some violety purple shade. These are definitely not colors I would normally use. I'll tell you, I got that uh, Viseart Pro Grand Pro 3 from my Beautylish Lucky Box. And I have really been inspired to pull out some more colorful shadows. And nobody says you have to apply colorful shadows, shadows in a really bold way. And I think this is gonna be definitely more reserved than um, if I was doing you know, a look with some chocolatey browns or with some more peachy tones. But I think that if nothing else, just the practice of using colors that I would normally be very frightened of. I would wear this on my lips, no problem, but. <laughs> On my eyes, it worries me. And looking at myself, I kind of feel like I gave myself pink eye. And maybe this is what pink looks look like on the eye before you have liner and mascara and the rest of your face finished. But right now, I feel like I just look really sick. <laughs> I'm gonna keep going. I'm not stopping yet. This metallic here is called Puffs. And I'm gonna use it on a large portion of my lid tapped over kind of towards the center. And then a little bit in the inner corner. Oh, that's a lot. 
more of that first shade. I'm just gonna tone down this slightly frosty situation here. I feel like I'm a little bit out of balance, but I wanna see if this is gonna look a little bit better with something on the bottom lash line and with the rest of my face being done. So give me a minute, I'll be right back. I'm getting to the point where I'm ready for some blush and call me crazy, but this shade here called Creme that I have a little bit in my crease is so pretty. I thought, what if we put a little bit of that, a little bit of that, like, ooh, so pretty. I think a lot of it comes from the fact that I'm used to seeing, you know, blushes this shade more so than I am used to seeing eyeshadows this shade. And I thought what a great way to pull the look together would be to use this shadow on the cheeks. So I'm totally doing that today. I forgot to record the portion of me doing my lower lash line. I'll tell you what I did. Um, I am listening to an audiobook right now from Angela Duckworth. It's called Grit. And it's all about being one of those people who persevere and aren't easily dissuaded when things don't go perfectly. Good hard work ethic. And as a parent, I'm like, ah, I want to know the science behind that because that's how I was raised. And by her scale, I'm a fairly gritty person, but I want to know the science behind it to explain it to my kids so that there's less resistance and there is more buy-in. So um, I was doing that while I was doing my eye makeup. And I was like, ah, I forgot. <laughs> So um, let me show you what I did. I took a small little smudger brush like this and I picked up this shade here. This one is called Berry Mousse and I ran that all along the lower lash line. I then incorporated some cream and I wasn't getting enough of that pinky vibe. So I did throw in just a little bit of custard, uh, but very lightly dusted. So it's a very subtle, most of the color is up here. And I think I like it that way. It looks a lot better. I was a little worried that I had a little pink eye going on. I think it's only gonna get better with liner and mascara. But um, this is when I decided it might be time to pull in one of my cream gel liners that is bright and colorful from ColourPop. So uh, the ones that I have is, uh, this more pinky one here is called Reef, and this one here is Loverboy. And I think I'm gonna use the lighter pink in my lower waterline. That may not be a good choice, but we're doing it. Oh, that really does bring a pop of color. It's very similar to that lighter of the two pinks in the Juvia's Place palette. Never in a million years did I think I'd be putting pink liner on my eyes. I feel like because it is so bold, I feel like I might need just a bit more on the lower lash line. So I'm gonna take a mix of those two pinky shades and just buff out that lower lash line a little bit more. I do think I'm gonna to stick to a more traditional dark brown color in my upper water line. This is Brew Ha Ha from ColourPop. I do really like this formula. I think this look turned out a lot better than I expected. Halfway through when I was eyes only and I didn't have any base products on my face, I feel like the pink was kind of really enhancing more of that pink and red undertone in my skin and I was starting to look sick. <laughs> and I was really worried and I was about to go and wash my whole face and go, pink eyeshadow is not for me. But I think that the perseverance, it's a really pretty look. The other thing I'll tell you is, although I did use these two shades right here and they can be really quite bold, they don't look quite this intense on the eye. It's much more diffused. And I think that reminding myself, I don't have to put it on till it looks like it does in the pan, really saved me from doing myself up in such a way that I would never want to wear pink eyeshadow again. Whereas this, I'm surprised at how much I liked it, even being bold enough to wear this shade here as a blush today, and it's really quite lovely. So I like today's outcome. I'm not going to tell you that every time I push myself outside of my eyeshadow comfort zone, it turns out really well. Other things that I will tell you that make this look more visually interesting for me is having used this shade right here. This is called Good Reef in my lower waterline, just to pick up on more of that light peachy pink color. Um, and then also making sure that 
everything is very softly blended on the edges so it didn't look too harsh. Another thing is I will tell you, I loaded up my eyelashes like big time. I really wanted to go for that doll effect, that doll lash look. And so I started out with the Lancome Seals Booster. It's their mascara primer. And then I just put like 12 layers, not, probably not 12, probably more like three or four layers of Lancome's Monsieur Big on top. And my lashes don't normally look this big, but I felt I needed a big lash to kind of really balance out the soft and powdery pink look of this eye. And I, I kept it real natural on the lips too. I, I used this, this is the Tony Moly Gloss Bar. It's very sheer, very not much of anything. And then I threw on just a hint of liner in Charlotte Tilbury's Pillow Talk. And I think it's one of those things where, you know, a lot going on here. I feel much more comfortable when I dial this down. You may be able to pull off both an intense lip and an intense eye. I just don't feel like I'm quite there yet. I see some people do it and they look fantastic. I might actually do something, maybe not this exact look again, but use more pinks because I've been so intimidated by pinks. It used to be pinks and purples. I kind of got over my fear of purples when I got the It's My Pleasure palette from ColourPop, but pinks still worry me. And I'm not saying I'm going out and buying a pink eyeshadow palette, but that new Natasha Denona Love palette, that $65 palette that had nothing but pinks and purples made me go, you know what? You think that's pretty, but you don't wear pinks. <laughs> so maybe do a couple of pink looks first to see if it's maybe the palette that I want to pick up. I probably won't pick it up, but it's one of those that if it piqued my interest, maybe it's time to play with pinks a little bit more. So thank you so much for watching today. I hope you have a fantastic day. I do have a lot of um, normal everyday mom things to do for the rest of the day. I have to pick up my kids from school. Uh, one of them has a basketball practice. The other one has a violin recital. Um, I have some errands to run today. So I am wearing this bright pink look and I decided I was just gonna wear all black. If I was gonna do bright pink, I was just gonna wear all black and I was gonna run my errands and be proud and not care. I don't know, what do you do when you wear a color? Do you pair it? Do you make it match with your outfit? Do you decide to not give it any sort of competition and wear something a little bit more neutral? I would love to know what you do when you are wearing something bolder, whether it's a bright lipstick or whether it's eyeshadow or really vibrant cheek products. Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. It means a lot to me and I hope to see you again soon. Bye.